and I love how you share about your wife, Shay Lee. Mm. Um, you know, is there anything you would want to say about her as a mother of five, you know, and as your, as your queen? Oh yeah. The space is hers. Um, man, I, it's, it's, I don't know the whole mirror thing and this, she's leading me. I don't have words for how much she's taken her who she is and authentically just said no and said you're going this way and saw me before i was even aware of who i am and in these moments i'm just like i don't i don't know how to phrase the gratitude for just our divine union and what we've created in you know our magic um, outside of the kids just our relation has been a thing, a place where I can't, I can't give her any more gratitude because there's like, there's so much she has stood for and so much she's like put up with essentially mm. in, in my growth and just knew that who I really was before I did. And so in that I got to see like what unconditional love is. I got to see how to show up gentle in a gentle way i got to see how to like speak differently and how to move and make love differently just based on her presence and who she is and how she smells and how she breathes and how she like she's the first person i really like took in that way and then to see her bring that to our kids and how patient she is and how loving she is and how like naturally like organically educational she is to her kids, how she really breaks down things in a gentle way uh, versus my understanding of like, no, that's how it works. This is what, <laughs> you know, like she's very soft in that way and very loving, um, even when it's hard or there's some wrongdoing to her. Like if I don't show up the way I know I could, she is quick to let me know, but in a way that's... Uh, harsh to hear sometimes, but loving, you know? And so she's taught me how to hold that fatherhood piece that I didn't learn from my father, you know, not in a, in a different way to have that patience to lead my kids as a father. And it's just been amazing. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. She's just so beautiful. I want to ask one more thing and I, I want to get into, uh, I want to know how you got into, you know, cutting hair and being an artist and all of, all of those things. But before I go out, what is the most challenging aspect of being a father to five of showing up for your family? Uh, you know, of six of, of, and then and beyond. Mm, there's a few, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's mostly challenge. It's mostly uh, challenge. But... It's, it's like a bunch of, lo it's so much love too at the yeah. same time. But the reason I'm asking for the challenge is because, it's helpful to share our stories. Yeah, yeah. Mine is um, time management and uh, spending that individual time with each one. And we do that. And I would love to be more potent with those spaces and um, patience to mm. understand their age and their development and always educating myself where they're at in their, you know, five and the three year old and the eight year old and the 17 and 18 year olds, like just understanding where they're at. And it gives me a peace of mind. It does help my patients when I'm like, Oh, that's, that's where they're at. So that turns into not a challenge, but the challenge is when it first hits, it's like, ah, I don't have the patience or loud noises <laughs> for me is when it's like, boom, 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 boom. Like, and that's the, patience of Shay too she's able to see that in me and say hey go go outside <laughs> you know yeah. and because that's a real thing for me is when it's just very loud it's hard my brain just goes everywhere sometimes you know and so mm. and it's their their being in their purest essence of their age and kids you know and so i don't say anything it's just hard to think sometimes so those are the most challenging in bedtime. So those are the most <laughs> <laughs> and bed bath bed bath bed, book time. That's a, bed that's a bath tough one. bed. That's yeah, <laughs> <all> those things. <laughs> that's that time. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. The loud noises. I am 
such a loud person anyways that for me, it's not the loud. Mm. For me, it's the mess. I, cleaning up other people's mess and specifically cleaning up that toddler mess energy. It's so funny. One of my sons, Johan, who's two, he'll put everything back exactly where it was. He's, he's just tuned. Nobody even asked him. Holland, this fool will be like, he'll just throw, he'll throw clothes off. He's throwing your stuff. He's throwing my crystals around and just like no regard yeah. for anything yeah. at all. And then we'll have the audacity to come to me like, hey, where are my sunglasses? I'm like, bro, That's- I don't know. You spread your stuff all over the yard. Go look. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's four and it's, it's also adorable. But, you know, and that, that shows up in my adult life. Mm. I am not here, like, I'm not tuned to cleaning up other people's messes. I'm encouraging us all to tend to our fires, tend to our gardens, uh, tend to the aspects of our lives that get messy because it's nobody else's responsibility but our own, right? And so with the kids, that does teach me patience. It does teach me compassion and empathy because, like, at the end of the day, or at the beginning of the morning, like t- this morning at 6 a.m., I'm picking up stuff and and just putting it away. It's a practice, though. It is, really, truly. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Johan and River are going to get along so well. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. And we, and we spoke about that, the importance for you and I. We've been doing this dance since 2019 mm-hmm. to get our families together, to make sure the wives meet, to make sure the kids get the chance to play. And I know so one kid's going to steal something for the other and they're going to cry and we're going to be there to be like, ah, yes, yeah. I know this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what a better, what a beautiful place to be in that though. Cause oh, yeah. it's rare to be in that kind of container or space you know, like you go to the playground or a sandbox and it's just like the other mom just automatically, you know, from my experience, the parents kind of like, oh, your kid's a lot wild, you know, but like to be in a container in a place where we have been there and understand that like we are allowing them to be in their purest essence as much as we can. Um, and that's how we live in our house. But then, yeah, going elsewhere and other people's like barbecues and it's just hard to explain in the moment that my kid is just running around knocking everything off the table and um it's not because of our parenting or you know anything it's river is a true river calm at times and uh rough sometimes you know so yes yeah it's it's definitely i'm excited to like be in the presence of other parents yeah. in that and, and we're, we're when we're talking about is Convergence Nine Remembrance, we're going to be bringing our our kids into the wild with us. We get to go to the wild places of the desert, of the jungle, um, of the forest, the mountains. And this time, we're going where the forest meets the ocean. Yeah. Olympic Peninsula, Washington. It is a wild place. It's also a young, young spirited place. So there's a you know just so you know, there's a little private beach where our kids could be swimming. Nice. You know, we're going to have some kids programming so the men and women can get down and do the work together. Um, you know, it's it's special and it's special to be able to do that in a wild place. We're going to we're going to exit the square world and we're going to come back to the circle. Yeah. And I know that there's a part of me that longs for village. A, I think it's a part of why I do what I do. Yeah, same. And it longs for tribe, just like at that human level. What would that be like? I'm, you know, I, I haven't even tasted it in this lifetime, mm. right? And so we do these weekends. We get a t- we get a taste of it. And what I know is, when we come out of the square world, somehow the children, they they understand that that uh, wild place much better than we do. And then all of a sudden, like the the digging in the dirt and the mud and the getting in the water, it all like it all makes sense and matches energy matches energy, like for like. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that taking my family out to places in those in those spaces. I just know the brotherhood so much more, and I I remember taking um, my son. He's on he was on the cusp of like being too cool, turning into a teenager, and not. And he was digging his heels into this camping venture we wanted to go to with a you know like minded individuals. And as soon as he got there. He wanted to make it a yearly thing. He was in the mm. dirt. He was like, he went back to self. And it was so amazing to watch, like, because it was hard to bring him. I was like, come on, let's go. We're going to have fun. You're going to love this. And now, uh, digging his heels, right? And then <laughs> as soon as we got there, he's the one that, like, 
absorbed the most, which was beautiful. And it reminded us to stay dirty, to play and to get into, you know, the nature part of what we were doing that weekend. And it was him that, you know, reminded at least me to stay in that space. So yeah, the kids are always there, man. They're, they're already there and it's beautiful yeah. even when they're teenagers, you know? That's cool. How, what's your oldest? 18. Your oldest? He just graduated high school. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. You got a high school graduate under your belt? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> All right. So I'm staying with the dad thing. Listen, you got so much experience. I got to yeah. know. Yeah. What's been the what's been a bigger challenge and opportunity because they come hand in hand um, with teenage boys from the perspective of the father? Yeah. Oh, that has been a wound for me. And this has been part of my stepping deeper has like, so me and Shay had our sons, mine, hers, and ours. So she had Riker, I had Zion. Um, and we connected so deeply, we became an instant family. It was beautiful, hence why we're here. Adolescence time and where I was growing and, you know, de-shedding my story, I was like a helicopter dad while they were like in their 9 to 13 years old, right? And so that broke trust with at least her son, Riker, right? And so it's been hard. I thought I was going to be the cool dad. I still listen to some of their music. You know, I just enjoy still the youthfulness of teenagers. And and my own teenager, I haven't been able to really connect with based on how I show up and how I've shown up, nagging and nitpicking. And I know that's a big part of my work. And where does that show up in, in my life as I was a teenager, you know, and I've been able to do some deep dives based on that. So it's so funny how I expected to be like this dad as a teenager raising boys and excited to like, whoa, let's, I'm taking a step back. And there's been times where we don't even acknowledge each other in the same room, like also, it's, you know, my resentment and all the things, but now where I'm at, it's like now I get to give him space and, you know, s slowly step into his life because, you know, his dad's not around. He's a teenager. He's going through a lot right now. Um, and I've missed out essentially on like two or three of his years, maybe four, since I've been, you know, reserved on his, you know, growing in that, in that stage of teenager. My son, he's just my son. He was like, it's just different. He's my blood. So he kind of took it. He took a lot of my helicopter dad or like all this, <laughs> the way I used to show up. Um, and I know it affected him. So I'm able to say sorry to both of them, but he took it differently, right? So I still stay connected and I've been connected with my son Zion, but he also had his moments with me as, you know, teenagers do. So I thought I would be this, grandiose like let's go fishing and and i see that i will be that in their young adult lives it's coming back together so there was like a falling away from dad and the crazy thing is is i wanted them to like play some kind of sport which they didn't and to have some other like fatherly or uncle influence in their lives and they didn't so been hard and rough you know they tried the sacred sons the uh sons youth like i think they were on the first call the first like with trevor and everything and trevor did check in at summit he's like how are your boys you know i'm like they're 18 and 17 and 18 now he's like whoa <laughs> yeah but um yeah. yeah man it's just it's it's been a rocky road so it's it's perfect that you asked me that because it's it is it is that space and time where they do separate and like they try, they're trying to find who they are in, in that space that I've noticed and I get to back up, but I feel like first it's, you know, and it's different for each boy of mine, each son. And I find that like, I backed up maybe a little too much from Riker. So like I'm moving back in. So yeah, God, so much learning, you know, the patience of toddlers and young ones, that's like a whole nother level then. And then you get into that's this. what I'm in right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and then in, when it gets I'm in, in the early stages, right. And then when it gets into like these emotions, you know, like inside out, very well, well, well put movie, <laughs> but these emotions that come to play and they get louder and stronger in their preteens and teen years, I was not prepared. I was definitely not prepared for that. 
I did tap in or tap out and tap Shay into a lot of it. And she's been very good with like, that's her calling, you know, teenagers and stuff. So I've been blessed with that, but for my relationship, I'm, I'm jumping back on the boat and owning my stuff and making sure I could help him in these later years now, you know, and be, you know, that present father that he deserves, you know? So that's, that's what I'm working on in these teenage years.